Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Monday, October 18th, 2021. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you are part of my life as well. Well, uh, today, Monday the 18th, um, we have an elder board meeting tonight at uh, 7 p.m. It's going to be by Zoom. The elders have some awesome things to discuss tonight. Uh, we're going to discuss priorities for the money that we have uh, left over from the insurance settlement. So that's going to be a, a fun thing to discuss. And uh, yeah, and a bunch of other things too. So we, we, we're excited about tonight's meeting. We appreciate your prayers for the elders. Uh, today is Alaska Day. So if you're living in Alaska, uh, today is a day off for you and uh, celebrating the, uh, the, the day that Alaska became a state of the United States. <clears throat> well, yesterday at the Sunday morning service, Jordan Laborde preached a great sermon on Psalm 90, and he focused in on, it's a wonderful psalm. I, I didn't, I mean, it didn't ever uh, uh, cross my mind that it was the oldest psalm, but that makes perfect sense. Um, and uh, I, I was fascinated. I thought it was a great sermon and a, a wonderful, a wonderful message. His message was about time and how uh, we perceive time how we experience time as human beings in contrast to how God experiences time. And um, he talked about how uh, the first thing he wanted to talk about was that God is eternal. And so uh, I thought that was fascinating and, and a very important thing. And, you know, God, uh, we, we learn throughout the Bible that God is eternal, that he is from everlasting to everlasting, that uh, God has no beginning and no end. And in fact, that his knowledge his wisdom and his power spans the entirety of human history and beyond. And that's a powerful truth, uh, both in our understanding the, the world and the universe that we live in, and understanding how we are to live and respond to things day by day. I need to mute my phone because it is beeping at me. And... Um, <clears throat> Where it really struck me was in the area of God's promises. Um, just think back to Genesis chapter 9, verse 16. Genesis, Genesis 9, 16. Uh, the flood has just happened, and Noah and the animals and Noah's family have come out of the ark, and God sets a rainbow in the clouds, and he says, When the bow is in the clouds, God says, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. Throughout the book of Genesis, God talks about everlasting covenants. Genesis 17, verse 7, was God and Abraham. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant. Um, Genesis uh, 49, uh, 48, let's say, uh, God said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you. I will make of you a company of peoples and will give this land to your offspring after you for an everlasting possession. Uh, everlasting, everlasting, everlasting. The only way that God could keep an everlasting promise is if he's an everlasting God. If God... Uh, had the op if God was not going to be around to fulfill his everlasting promise, then it would be no promise at all. But because God is from eternity past to eternity future, because God is everlasting and his attention, his knowledge, his power, his wisdom uh, extend throughout all ages, God is able to make everlasting promises and keep them. When God says that his promise is everlasting, he means it. And he's the only one who can mean that kind of promise. For the rest of us, there has to be some sort of doubt that we could actually fulfill our word. We might not be there to fulfill our word. Uh, our power might fail uh, before we've been able to fulfill our word. We don't know the obstacles that lie in our path. And so when we make promises, at best, they're provisional promises. But when God makes everlasting promises, they're promises that he keeps. And he keeps them, he can keep them, because he is an eternal God. 
Brother, sister, when you're listening to God make promises to you, you can bet that they are everlasting promises. He will not fail to keep the promises that he makes to you. And that's one reason why it's so critical to study the scriptures and to learn what the contents of the scriptures are, because it's in the scriptures that God's promises are made manifest. The scriptures lay God's promises out for us to see. Uh, we can trust that a God who makes those promises is able to keep those promises because he's an everlasting God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that uh, in your love, you've made us everlasting promises. And as Christians, the primary everlasting promise that you made to us is that if we trust in Christ, we are saved and that we have everlasting life, that eternal life begins now for us. God, uh, thank you that you are the God who can make those kinds of promises and keep them. And God, we put our trust in you today. Lord, I lift up to you our elder board meeting tonight at seven. May uh, the elders be blessed as we work our way through uh, the, the various important uh, details uh, of the church. Lord, I, I thank you for providing for our needs as a church through the insurance uh, payment and, and that we now have a building that is paid for. God, I pray for your, your help and your wisdom in, uh, in making good decisions about, uh, about the future for our church. Lord, we love you and we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.